You know, I really like tea. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video today talking about how to download and play Grand Theft Auto 1, the very first Grand Theft Auto game for Windows 10 in 2021. So, Grand Theft Auto is the very first game in the whole Grand Theft Auto series. It's a game that came out in 1997. And you can tell from these screenshots on the Steam page, uh, it looks quite a bit different from today's games. Instead of being a 3D game, it's a top-down game that you just that the camera sort of zooms in and out of. You drive around, you do different missions and stuff. Don't even have cell phones in this. You have a stinking pager and uh, pay phones on street corners. But yeah, it's a pretty cool game for what it is. Um, hasn't held up well over time. But it is still a lot of fun to play, or at least I personally think it is. I have a walkthrough on my channel if you guys want to check it out. It'll be linked down below in the description if you're not already watching it already. Uh, but enough of that. Let's go ahead and actually get into how to set this up. So this is the Steam page for Grand Theft Auto. It still exists, but as you can see, there's no add to library button or no purchase button or anything. Uh, basically, it only serves as an informational page. I'm surprised that the developers didn't actually unlist it from showing up in search results. You can still search for it and find it, but it it's no more information than just this basic description and a few reviews down here. A lot of them are negative, again, because the game hasn't held up super well and because they took it off the Steam store. So if you can't get this game on Steam, where can you get it? Well, you have a couple of options here. The first is the Rockstar Classics website, which gives you a download link for Grand Theft Auto 1 and Grand Theft Auto 2 as well, which is also no longer on Steam. Now, the Rockstar Classics download actually used to be offline for a couple of years. I remember when I first went on here a couple of years back and tried to get it, it just said, oh, hey, this is no longer available at this time. Uh, but for whatever reason, they've put it back up there. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, that being said, I would not recommend that you download this version. And the reason for that is because there was two versions of Grand Theft Auto 1. There was the Windows version, which is what this is, and then there was the original version, which was built for DOS. If you don't know what DOS is, DOS was kind of the system that existed before Windows. It was sort of the pre-Windows system. Basically, if you've ever used the Windows command prompt, that's basically all DOS is. It's just a big command prompt system. Um, anyway, they came out with a version of it for that, and that version works much better nowadays because the Windows version just has so many bugs. It was never optimized to work on newer software. You can even see this little disclaimer right here to launch Grand Theft Auto and latest versions of Windows running 640 by 40 screen resolution mode and it tells you how to make it compatible. Um, I've tried this. I've downloaded the Windows version, installed it, ran it with even the compatibility settings. I've messed around with it. Still couldn't get it to work. It was constantly crashing on startup and giving me error codes. You could probably get this to work in Windows XP as like a, like a virtual machine, but even then you're gonna run into problems because there's an issue with this game where if you start it the very first time, I, don't, I know I keep scratching my face, I'm itchy, uh, but anyway, when you get it the first time and start it, it would work fine, but then when you start it on subsequent launches, you know, when you wanted to go back and play it some more, um, it would have this issue where it would just give you an error code and refuse to launch. And the reason why is there's a bug in the Windows version where it changes one of the code values in one of the game files. Now there is this fixer, it's called a fixer tool that somebody made that you can download, it's like a mod for the game that you can run each time before you start the game so it'll refix the files, but you have to do that each and every single time before you play the game. And then there's other issues with it like where the radio stations just stop working mid-game uh, the screen resolution's off until you mess around with some settings and when it, it's a big pain basically the Windows version kind of sucks so you can't this is an option but it's not your best one now what I recommend is something called the GTA 1 max pack so what the GTA 1 max pack is is a modder by the name of Toshiba 3 I think was his name he got this and packaged it together to run on DOSBox it has a configuration and everything and it just works so, so well on newer systems. It'll just launch and run beautifully right at the start. It not only has Grand Theft Auto 1, but it also has the London 1969 and the London 1961 DLC standalone games, which are, I guess you'd call them mission packs. That's what it's 
described as here. I'd say it's a pretty good description. Uh, this one does not have any launch bugs. The radio stations work flawlessly. You can get it. You can get it to run in widescreen, but it doesn't. It doesn't run super well. But you you can toy around with the settings and do it how you want to do it. It's it's a great little package. He did a wonderful wonderful job on this. I'm kind of surprised it has less than 300 views. But this is your best option if you want to play Grand Theft Auto One on a modern system. So. There's a link to this down below in the description. Go to this page and then hit this little download button over next to the zip and it's going to download this. Based on your internet speed and also what the servers are on a particular day, it might take a little while to download and install. I would say probably about 20 minutes um, if you have good internet. So there's this and that's more just because of the servers. So it would download to here. This is the installer for the Windows version. By the way, I was messing around with that. Let's go ahead and delete that. So it's going to download as a zip file and you're just going to want to right click it and click unzip. So, and when I have mine, I have it moved over here to the C drive just so I don't accidentally delete it. So GTA 1 Max, we're going to open this. And this is basically your folder right here. So this is the executable. And you can just right click this. You can hit send to desktop, make a little shortcut. Here is the inglide config. So when you launch this, it's going to launch into a little menu, little DOS box menu. And you can either run this game in normal mode or glide mode. Now what glide mode does is it sort of optimizes it so that you can like change the resolution of the app and like make it do in widescreen, which isn't great, but it is workable. Um, it also adds like some texture filtering, some sort of a bit of anti-aliasing to the game. I don't really care for the way it looks, but you know, it does, it is what it is, I suppose. So there's some upsides to that, there's some downsides. So you can set the resolution here as you want it. I just have mine by desktop. I have preserve, preserve original for the aspect ratio, or you can do fit to screen, which again makes it widescreen. Vertical synchronization, you probably want to. For, for this, I would just say keep it off. Honestly, it's probably gonna be set to on by default. I would just turn it off unless you just experience a lot of screen tearing. Refresh rate, you can make it by app. You can set it to whatever the resolution the refresh rate of your monitor is. Mine is 144 hertz, that's why I have it set to. Uh, and then turn this off, this just adds a little splash screen for glide. I would just keep that off. Gamma direction, you can just keep that on default unless you wanna mess with the lighting. Okay, so then for that, you're about good. In the document section, now this is really cool, and this, you can pull up maps. Now this game does not have uh, a little mini map, a little HUD to show you how to get around the city. So these are really, really helpful. Here is your Liberty City map and your San Andreas map, as you can see. So you can like, if you have a second monitor, you can stick these over here. You could print this out if you want to, to consult it. Just kind of shows you how to get around the city. I found this to be super, super helpful when playing this game because otherwise it would be so difficult to keep track of where everything is. This shows you where the little respray shops are, the bomb shops, the docks where you can sell cars, the hospitals, the police stations where you respawn. Da, da 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 It's it's really, really cool. So these are included here as well. This was a great addition. So I would launch this and kind of show you guys what the menu interface looks like, but unfortunately DOSBox does not run very well with OBS. So that's kind of got its own set of problems. So I'm not really gonna do that today because it would just be kind of glitching. But basically you're gonna double click this executable. It's gonna open up a little miniature DOSBox window and then it's gonna show you this little menu and you can hit the number one to load up Grand Theft Auto where you can hit two or three to load up the one to DLCs. You can hit four, which will take you to settings where you can configure the controls, right? By default, it uses like the arrow keys to move around. Maybe you wanna change that to WASD, you can do that. By default, enter is to get in and out of vehicles. I changed that to E just because, you know, my left hand, it's just easier to do that right over there instead of it being way over here with my right hand with the arrow keys. So you can just change that how you want it to be. You can do the same for the London games. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty intuitive. You can probably figure it out. So yeah, that's basically the whole tutorial. It's pretty, pretty simple. I just wanted to give you guys a good explanation of how this all works, show you some of the ins and outs of it. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. If you've never played this game before, I would definitely recommend you to do so just for the experience. You might love it, you might hate it. I found it to be a lot of fun which is kind of why I'm doing a walkthrough of it on my channel. So again, if you want to, you should totally check that out. If you get stuck at a certain part or have some issue, you can also consult that if you want to, you know. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. Big thank you so much for watching this. Please leave a like if it helped you. Till next time, I've been your host, Cass Gaming, and I will see you all at the top.